This graph plots the relationship between union density and inequality. Household inequality is shown on this axis. The higher the Gini coefficient, the greater the inequality. And union coverage, the share of the labor force covered by union contracts, is on this axis. Ideally, we would be about here, with a healthy share of the labor force represented by unions and a low measure of inequality. In 1979, the national numbers looked like this. Just over 27% of workers were covered by union contracts, and inequality on the Gini scale was 0.415. The rank of individual states in 1979 on both inequality and union coverage varied widely. Urban and industrial states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Illinois, for example, had generally higher union density and lower rates of inequality. A few Mountain West and less industrialized Northeastern states combined low union density and low rates of inequality. The bastions of the right to work South combined low union density and high inequality. New York home to both a strong union movement and Wall Street, is the sole outlier, with both union coverage and inequality higher than the national rates. The next 10 years, there was a profound shift towards lower union coverage and greater inequality. Nationally, union coverage fell to under 19% and inequality worsened. State ranks still varied, but moved in the same dismal direction. Between 1989 and 1999, we see the same pattern, declining union coverage, rising inequality, although neither changed quite as dramatically. And between 1999 and 2009, things get a little worse still. Union coverage, now under 14%, is about half what it was in 1979. The movement, most pronounced in the first decade covered here, is clearly along a line marked by declining union coverage and rising inequality. We see this in the drift of the national numbers and in the experience of individual states. Michigan, for example, sees dramatic union losses and a corresponding spike in inequality. Wyoming sees the same through 1999, although changes in inequality at the state level in the last 10 years seem driven more by finance and real estate than by union decline. This is a pattern borne out in Louisiana and New York, where the contribution of union losses to rising inequality is most apparent in the earlier decades.